Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next uh, Voltron book review. This one, as you can see here, is going to be for the Voltron Legendary Defender, The Paladin's Handbook, official guidebook of Voltron Legendary Defender. This book came out, I believe, at some point like last week. Uh, I just had a hard time actually finding any place to have it in stock. And by the time it was delivered, I only have it today to present to you guys. But anyway, in the review here, I will be kind of showing you a bunch of the pages inside and in general giving you a kind of idea of what actually the book covers. But uh, just uh, first of all, I do want to give a very quick review for those of you who maybe just want to know, just really quickly, should I buy this book or not? I'm a Voltron fan. Is this the book I should buy? I'd honestly say that um, overall, this is a pretty solid book. It's not going to blow your mind with tons of new information that we haven't seen presented in the show. It's, um, you know, what's presented here for the most part is a lot of the stuff that we have, but it's presented in a pretty nice way in that it, the book is a kind of in-universe artifact in a way. The idea is that this is literally a book that the characters together have written and, you know, you as this kind of random outsider, the idea is that, you know, you're a paladin in training in a way, you found this book, and this is an introduction to their story. So that's a pretty cool thing, just to see the characters, you know, as they write little notes for each other on each section, um, the little interactions. But yeah, from brand new information perspective, it's not going to massively impress you. There are a few surprising things that, like, you're just like, oh, I didn't expect him to do that. But for the most part, it's things like the character ages, and then little bits and pieces here and there that are going to impress you. Uh, and then beyond that, it's just, I think overall, it's a pretty solid, you know, basic getting into kind of intermediate level kind of guide to the universe in that they obviously cover a lot of ground of like uh, season one and season two um, uh, and hint at stuff from season three as we'll get into. So the only unfortunate thing about this book's release is that the timing, I think, Clearly, I don't think it was meant to be that case. This is a book that I feel like should have came out a few months ago, uh, prior and in the lead-up to Season 3, rather than this book coming out post-Season 3. Because it very clearly doesn't cover the Season 3 stuff, but teases it in a way where like it feels like this should have been released just before Season 3, rather than afterwards. But uh, yeah, so overall, I'd say yes, the other reason I'd say get this book is because it's pretty cheap and it's pretty small as well, which keeps the cost down. So just as a brief uh, size comparison, here is the Voltron Legendary Defender comic series, the, the trade paperback. So this is the size of like a standard comic basically. And this book, as you can see, is pretty small in comparison to this. Um, like it's a good bit smaller than it. It's um, kind of a you know, the an avatar, a standard avatar comic, like The Promise or something like that, uh, is kind of like midway between the size of this book and that, and uh, the, the comic. But, um, you know, it very much is a kind of handbook size thing. But anyway, let's open this finally. Um, brief thing on the back is just, you know, gives you the information. A lot of the other books that have come out from the same publisher are just recaps of episodes, so I don't think there's that much information in them. And then the price here, it says the standard retail price is $6.99. Uh, and online, realistically, like I, I got this for like five, five euro fifty shipped. Uh, five euro fifty plus like one or two euro shipping, so like seven, eight euro. It's it's pretty cheap, and I think I got my money's worth out of it. But anyway, let's open this book. So we get the standard stuff, you know, before we properly start the book. And um, there's the idea of the sections and how many pages there are. You know, just under a hundred pages. We get welcome, young paladin. Meet the lines. Meet the paladins. The team. The Galar Empire. Blades of Marmora. For the universe. Learn to speak Altaian. Very short bit, but interesting enough. Important information for your paladin journey, and then a kind of quiz, you know, which line you'll be. Um, but yeah, we get a start intro from Allura, and it's pretty cool, because you can see here the immediate idea of what they're going for here. I've asked, it's crossed out and written in blue, forced, and then on the bottom here, you see that, like, okay, so depending on the color of the writing, that is going to determine... Uh, basically who is um, basically making comments throughout the book. Now what ends up happening is that for the most part like Lance I would say gets most of them as just little jokes and then there's a couple of characters who really don't make a ton of comments throughout the book for the most part but um, it's just an interesting dynamic overall. 
So we get Meet the Lions, a brief intro to what it is, and, you know, Lance saying, assuming Keith doesn't run off or something, or gets stuck on a taco planet. And yeah, this section is fairly fairly basic on the lines. It's kind of the stuff we've had before, like through the through the website reveals and stuff like that, the, the basic power levels and kind of what everything does. Uh, their capabilities, like tail laser, mouth cannon, jaw blade, is the exact same on all of the lines. And then they just give you the hidden power uh, of basically what like the Bayard basically does. Um, you know, they give you Voltron position and where it was initially found which is interesting and then just an idea of like the line chooses a person who in this case is a born leader calm and in control and um, as it says here it's the largest smartest and most powerful but it's also the most difficult to fly for the black line uh, red line obviously found galra battleship position right arm we have here magma beam as the special power plus the plasma cannon and then you know it's temperamental it's faster more agile and um, and it chooses a pilot who relies more on instincts than skills alone. So that's interesting. Green line, again, fairly basic. Guardian Spirit of the Forest. It chooses a line with a curious personality. We get the whole idea of, like, cloaking shield and then establishing that, that yes, that is something that Paige added to the line. And then the special ability is the Vine Cannon. Um, blue line here. This is probably the more interesting one in that it's one of the lines where it's just Everyone's been kind of debating what exactly is the thing? What does the blue line look for in its paladin? And it says here, the blue line has a friendly nature. It has an adventurous spirit and chooses a pilot who is equally bold. Um, it also ha it, it is also the most accepting of new pilots. And then Lance writes, but blue, I thought we had something special. And again, just the ice and hidden power. So with season three in mind, that's very fitting for why like Allura obviously would be moving to the blue line in that one of the key features of the blue line is that it's kind of the, the most inviting and friendly to like a new paladin, which is interesting. Uh, Hunks one is probably one of the kind of least insightful in that it's just, okay, caring and kind pilot. Hidden power is that, you know, we get the jet booster, extra armor stuff. And then here we go, meet the paladins, and just some jokes about these specific, um, uh, you know, pictures that were chosen. Um, and, uh, yeah, a little joke about, if we were a TV show, I feel like we would have just finished season two. So it gives you an idea about when this book was kind of meant to come out versus where it is. And that, like, technically, if this book's release was, like, planned in line with everything that should have said season three because the release date was after season three came out and um, but here we go this is some of the more interesting stuff here the actual paladin profiles the most interesting thing being that we finally get character ages so shiro's 25 which allow i know a lot of people were kind of wondering like okay he's clearly older than the rest of the group but how much older and here we get that it's it's a pretty substantial margin not like huge but um that he is notably older than the rest of them as we're getting into you know hunk here writes space dad oldest and most experienced um and just an idea of basically the basic idea of like his uh, history of, like the galaxy garrison and um, he was part of the you know the galaxy garrison kerberos mission and then some kind of fun facts about him here you know champion he has the the the, the different arm and so on here's keith's profile again he's 18 here uh the other thing is just uh, heritage Obviously, like, he's, they always refer to him as Shiro, but, like, just getting that, like, we know his his name, his full name is Takashi Shirogane, but, like, just getting it mentioned here again, his heritage is Japanese. And then Keith here, it's so random, like, you'd think a big point of this bio would be that he's now part Galra, but it's just, like, part human, part Galra, and then at the very end they just say, Keith is part Galra, but his family history remains a mystery. Um, as, and then here's the thing that gives you an idea that this was written with, some context to season three coming out soon. Keith ranks second in command to Shiro, and then in red it's crossed out by Keith, and it says, it doesn't matter, nothing will happen to Shiro, which is exactly Keith's attitude towards the disappearance of Shiro at the start of season three, so that's um, pretty interesting. You have Lance talking about Keith's hair here, and uh, them kind of talking in the comments. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, Paige's profile here again, you know, Katie Holt. Heritage Italian, I found that pretty interesting. I didn't know that and nothing about her obviously kind of comes across as like that being a kind of aspect of her, but you know, age 15 as well. Um, Keith 18, as I said. Um, 
And yeah, just pretty basic stuff, just like that programmer, you know, she loves peanut butter cookies, but not peanuts. Um, the, the number five nickname from Quran. Um, eager to find her family and so on. So uh, pretty to the point there. Lance, you know, they, they do call him, uh, as you can see here, class clown. We get his backstory, age 17, heritage Cuban, which we have known, uh, favorite food, garlic knots. Um, and then, fun moment here, Lance owns a pair of fuzzy blue line slippers, and then um, it's Shiro in the, in the kind of purple here who writes, actually we all do, Lance just wears his the most, which is a pretty interesting one. Hunk, uh, Heritage Samoan, which, um, you know, it's it, it very fitting, it makes sense. Um, age 17 as well, so he's the same age as Lance. And, uh, you know, Hunk has an encyclopedic knowledge of Earth's uh, spices and growing understanding of herbs from other places. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, again, basic stuff that he threw up at the Academy, but uh, he was the one who kind of allowed them to ha find the blue line in the first place. Here's the page on the Bayards. Um, nothing really notable here. They do cover the Black Bayard and just say that it transforms into a bunch of different things uh, without giving much context. Here's the Voltron page. Again, just pretty basic, you know, Voltron more powerful than anything. Full stats. Um... It seems like there's a bit of an editing mistake up here with the sword stuff, in that it says, Sword, formed from the Red Paladin's Bayard. Okay. Um, when combined with the blue and black Bayard, the sword grows in size and strength. And then immediately followed by that, the green Bayard forms the sword. Sword, formed from the red Bayard. The green Bayard forms the sword. I get that, you know, the effect when... Voltron summons its sword is that it's you know, the hands coming together and the hands are the red and green line but that is a, it feels like it's a really weird structural way to kind of say that um, and then it just gives you the other weaponry of Voltron and um, here's the team we get the, the King Alphor one and this is I suppose where the book like if it was including the season three stuff if the book came out a little bit afterwards we would there would have been so much more information on King Alphor like they don't even mention that that he's the red uh, the red line pilot that he's the original red um, paladin here even though that was basically revealed to us in season two i think Quran said it um we get princess allura here they they do the fact files differently for the characters who aren't the paladins but they do say here and teenage daughter of king alfor and given that they later on reveal i suppose you know the time stuff in that they're basically referring to yeah she's a teenager and even in um altean time it still means she's a teenager like there's no real difference between that stuff so uh find it weird that they don't give her an age but like i'd assume probably that she is probably 18 or 19 um i'd probably go more with 19 just that she is a little bit to say just to say that she is a little bit older than the rest of them um maybe going on 20 just to be just because i suppose going with the flashback in season three it would make sense to have like the gap in time for allura to grow and then like uh the whole revenge of zarkon to come to play happen like 20 years later but um you know some interesting stuff here um it says here you know allura thinks that the earthlings ears are hideous um telepathic connection with the mice um super strength comedian like ability uh able to absorb and channel large amounts of quintessence of course here's quran and um, you get the full name here quran uh hieronymus wimbledon smith or smythe um his grandfather built the castle 10,600 years ago um and then some stuff here in his own kind of uh pen here's the stuff on the enemies uh just hunk joking about space music uh, and then you know just an interesting note here the Galra are a militant generally written in by Keith obviously based off the the big change that happened in the middle of uh, season two with him on that front and um, there's a brief hierarchy of the Galra Empire Zarkon, Hagar and the Druids, Commanders just giving you an idea of where Hagar is and um, Zarkon you know they do, they do, obviously, because it's after season two, reveal the original Black Paladin and so on, but nothing overly interesting here. Um, just the basic stuff. Hagar's interesting in that, obviously, they, they say, recently she reveals herself to be an Altean, something that surprised even Princess Allura. 
and Allura notes Karan and I thought we were the last Altaians. And, and you know, they, they, they tease this thing, a strange connection to the Emperor's Archon. And her powers are great, she harnesses quintessence. Um, I think with Zarkon they also say, um, yeah, his impressive longevity is due to an overconsumption of quintessence, which is what we knew. Um, the Druids, this is probably one of the more interesting pages in the book, uh, just because the Druids are given, like, literally no context in the show when they're presented, in that when, when, they're, when some of them are defeated in the final battle in Season 2, they just kind of puff into dust, and, they, and in this description here, they basically say that they're not Galrans. And it says here, although technically not Galra, they've been loyal to the Galra for 10,000 years. They perform rituals such as channel and quintessence. So that's interesting that like they're just this other type of species. That It's not that like um, Hagar made them or anything like that. That they're just this other thing. I, I'm wondering if there any connection between the kind of darkness material thing from the other um, reality that's related to the druids or what, but um, very interesting that they can you know, channel quintessence and so on. That's their kind of role. Then the commanders, uh, Sendak from the first season, Pro Rock, of course, um, get uh, some idea about the Robe Beast. And then it is interesting that there is a page on Lotor and they do show, even though it's sort of uh, kind of faded out to some degree, it's an accurate portrayal of Prince Lotor as we know him in season three. And they just say, we don't actually know anything about him, just that he exists. Um, so there's that. Here's the Blades of Marmora. Again, nothing really established more than what we already know with them. Uh, just that they're you know, a secret organization. Um, and that Keith is now a member, which we know of from Season 3. And then we do go over the members of the um, the Blades that we know. Colavon is the leader, of course. Ulaz. Reading this page... There's no real new information, but they, the, the context that they give to it and the way they write about him here, it really kind of makes you go like, actually, yeah, like, as, a, as a Shiro says, we owe everything to Ulaz. We actually do. Like, he, when we actually meet him, you know, he's only in that, like, a few episodes, but he is one of the most important characters in terms of, like, what he, his actions allowed to happen in the series. So he's very important. So that's interesting. There's Thace. Antok, of course. I, I, was I was almost surprised they um, had the Antok mention here in that, like, season three, there's just no mention of him. Yes, you know, he was dead, but I'm surprised there... there I was surprised no, there was no mention from Colavon about, like, let's do it for Antok or something like that in, in season three. Explore the universe, so this is, like, the uh, the different places. So the Altean Castle of Lions, and, you know, engines powered by Balmera crystals. Here's all the different kind of areas within the place, capabilities... Um, Aris, of course, is the place where the castle was found, at least, when, oh, at least in the show, as far as we meet it. The Balmera is here, um, and just, you know, no inform new information on that. They do, I don't know if they're meant to, we're not meant to read the layout of this page massively well, but Shay, this character here isn't Shay. Like, Shay's over here, and I don't, I... I don't know if like, it was just that they wanted to have a bigger picture of her over here, but they had to have the box describing her over here. But like, it, it feels weird that they get the characters wrong and that and, and stuff like that. Um, but uh, anyway, let's uh, move on. The Baku, um, obviously from season early season two, they cover all of those characters. Taujir, they do have a whole section on Space Mall, which is interesting. It goes from that whole page into like this whole section as well, um, about uh, Repet Sal's uh, sustenance stand, uh, and then the shop, it's Earth, and Colton Ecker. Um, the swap shop, Varkon, they have a whole page about him as like, he thinks himself second in command. He, yeah, Zarkon's faithful, faithful number two, even though he's just a mall cop. Uh, Altea, you know, obviously we don't see it right now, but uh, just a mention of that. Wish they kind of had mentioned, you know, Lura's mother's name here. That's something that they could have added in, just you know, just to give us the name. Um, random note up here at the top. Um, they just randomly say that Altea did not have wet rain, but it had rocks that rained down. Okay, <laughs> this is a random random note there. Uh, also, I don't know if we knew this before, but they do name the uh, the mice here. Um, uh, in, the, in here, as you can see, Chuchul, Chulat, Plachu, and Plat. 
Uh, I don't know if we had their names before. Interesting that they do have a section on the Galaxy Garrison. Um, I get, you know, the, the connection of most of the Paladins coming from here. Um, all of them having some connection to it, except, I suppose, Allura, basically, because of where, how things went in Season 3. But I just like that they mention it here and gives me hope that, like, when we go back to Earth, I, I would hope that the Galaxy Garrison, you know, are aware of, like, more stuff that's going on here. Because they mention here, you know, Galaxy Garrison Confidential, that, like, this is, like, a a report that the garrison has made about the Kerberos in incident. And they mention here, and it seems like it's from the Galaxy Garrison's perspective, is now believed that the astronauts were captured by the Galar Empire. So, like, immediately it's just like, okay, wait, if the Kerberos mission was to find life in the galaxy, how are they then aware that they're named after the Galar Empire? I get, like, Shiro was kind of maybe saying some stuff about it. Um, but it's just an interesting one, for sure, how they do it. Learn to speak Altaian... Now, I, I, I turned to this page and it was just like, oh cool, we're going to have a whole section on this. And it's like, mm, it's not as good as you think. But here's the units of time. So a deck of Phoebe is just a year. That was an interesting one to find out there. I, I was wondering, like, does it mean like 10 years? Uh, a Phoebe is a month, a uh, movement is a week, a Quintant is a day, a Varga is an hour, a Dobosh is a minute, and a Tick is just a tiny bit longer than a second. So that's nice to know. If anyone mentions Decafibes, it directly relates to one year. The different animals that Pidge kind of went over. Um, Quiznak is basically a curse word. Um, Rapid Saw, Military Salute. Um, and then just random kind of just ending of the book here. Quintessence, what it is. No real information given, just that, you know, this is why Zarkon has his 10,000 year life. The Teledove, Fraunhofer lines. Um, the Weblum. They don't mention the the person Keith found in there, who's obviously um, one of uh, Lotor's generals. And then just the end of the book, which is this just ten questions. And the way they do it is just there's a question, there's five answers, and it's basically like all of the A's relate to one of the paladins, all of the B's relate to another, and it's just answer the ten questions. Whichever A, B, C, D, or E you got more of, that's the paladin you'd be. Pretty basic. And then if you turn the book upside down on the last page, they tell you that, uh, that information. Here, yeah, mostly A's and so on. So that is the book, a quick kind of rundown of the information covered in the book. I think it's, it's pretty well put together. I, I appreciate it being a smaller book, um, but still being kind of, I think, well organized for the most part. And I think there's enough you know, subtle brand new information here that it's worth getting just to have a little small encyclopedia of the Voltron series because the presentation in the show tends to, you know, be quite jargon heavy. So it's kind of nice to have this book to just kind of cut through some of that jargon of just like, okay, what does, what does this mean? And so on. Again, not going to blow anyone away, but an overall very solid book. And given that it's uh, the price of this book is pretty cheap, especially online, if you're a huge Voltron fan and kind of want to collect some of the merchandise, I think this is kind of one of the ones you kind of have to get in a way. So that's the review of the Paladin's Handbook. Overall, you know, pretty highly recommended. Um, I almost hope that they do a volume two because I'd like to see what, what a book in this style, what it would do with some of that information presented in um, season three. Like how do the other Paladins feel about Shiro now that he's, now that he's returned? thoughts on the original batch of paladins like you could give more information on the original paladins through a book like this um and so on just just to see how how everything is is presented in a written format but uh yeah that's the voltron legendary defender paladins handbook review uh that's been the video in the comments let me know what your thoughts are on the book if you've read it already or if you have any questions about it but uh yeah that's been the video thanks for watching and bye